Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Icy. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today as we figured out what happens uh, after all to our group of survivors. So if you didn't get uh, if you didn't catch last episode, well, uh, things got from bad to worse. Uh, we lost our leader. We are we were trying to run away from the uh, red uh, horseman, and I think they might just have captured us. And now. Uh, so after after walking for several days through the White Plains, something happens, and it's it doesn't look like something good. Not at all. You see three people peacefully approaching the bandits. They don't look like common survivors. Even the bandits who assaulted you, despite their good resources, are not that well equipped. Polished and shiny weapons, high-tech equipment. All the bandits look at those three people with reverence and awe. You never saw someone so well equipped while uh, walking on the white wasteland. A feminine voice comes from one of the, on one of those masked soldiers. Proceed with the test and let's move on. We have no time to waste. I'm sure they're good for uh, your needs. Some prisoners are young and healthy. They are perfect for your needs. The woman slowly turned the face turn to face the bandit and stand still for a couple of seconds in an intimidating silence. We'll see. They approach you and the other prisoners and start using some medicinal uh, medical equipment to take some of your blood. They have they take a sample from each one of you. They go away and after some minutes they come again. The mysterious woman looks at you uh, looks at Goran and Irma and then nods to her two companions. Okay, so Goran and Irma are Husband and wife. Why the hell? Hmm. Take those two and their children. They're the only ones we're interested in. Do what you want with the others. We have no use for them. Okay, so they walk away br bringing Goran, Irma and their children with them. Jerome tries to stand up his on his feet and protest, but he gets, ki he gets kicked in the stomach and falls on the ground. The mysterious strangers leave, taking your companions with them. While they disappear into the mist, the bandits give you the order to get on your feet and start walking again. You're now walking, just like any other day, with armed guards all around you. When you hear bandits sh shouting, you turn to see what's happening. Yeah, we've heard that... that uh sound effect before at least 30 horsemen are charging the bandits okay so apparently uh, apparently everyone here uses horses or is it just a sound effect i don't know quickly descending from the top of a small hill they're wearing red okay so these they are the red horsemen feared bandits and pillagers the bandits start shooting at them but the horsemen rapidly reach your position and start attacking your captors in close combat Jerome speaks, uh, Jerome screams before he starts running away. Let's go now! You and the other prisoners start running away while the bandits are too busy worrying about their own lives. You keep ro running away from your captors while you hear bullets going towards you. One of those bullets hits Joseph on his chest and he falls on the ground. Oh, Joseph. Up, April stops running and kneels uh, by her companion's body. Joseph! Joseph, please stand up! Uh, okay, so yeah, I guess yeah, that, mm, this is a bit problematic. The problem is when one of one of our companions is down, there's a risk that the whole party is gonna go down along with them because uh, I, apparently there's no way. Yeah, he's dead. He has to be dead. There's no way to save him or anything. Just we could keep running away. And uh, yeah, let's. Yeah, let's to let's yeah. It's too late for him. He's dead. We must run away now. Carlos ru Carlos turns around and starts yelling at his wife. He's right. Just as if he's dead. Run. <laughs> Someone keeps shooting at you, but the bullets pierce the snow around you without hitting anyone. You're too far to be an easy target. You see the entrance of a tunnel ahead of you, and your group starts running towards it. You are getting far away from your captors, who seem to be too busy finding the horsemen. You take a last look behind you and you see no one coming after you. The tunnel is quite long, but after a few minutes, you finally see the light and the cold wind coming from the outside. You can see the world map by pressing M while traveling around the world. Okay, oh, the world. Okay, so... Whew. 
We survived that one. We survived that one. So is this the world map? Oh, looks like a huge hydrographic bay. So, oh, the, the game doesn't pause? Okay, so we need to find cover. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, okay. You spot an old house and tell everyone to get inside. You should be safe and, be, and able to rest at least for some time. Well, we can stay here for the night. I don't think they'll come after us. Fine. Let's see if there's something useful inside the place. The group starts scavenging the place. It looks like someone's shelter, but it has clearly been abandoned years ago. You find some useful supplies, such as a couple of handmade bows with some arrows, some very rusty blades and three bandages. Excuse me. That seem clean enough to be used. While the Metro is preparing a fire, you see Eva speaking up. What shall we do now? So Eva is a little girl who hasn't spoken, uh, who doesn't speak a lot. Um. Uh, well, I guess promising s uh, pr the promise of safety is probably not gonna fool her. After all, her parents got killed in front of her, so let's not go with that. Uh, this, the promise of, uh, you know, the assurance over there doesn't seem to be that assuring uh, if her parents died right in front of her, yeah, and again. So, yeah, I guess tomorrow we'll get as far from here as possible. It's the safest thing to do. I don't think I'll be able to keep running like we did today. We can leave me here. I can take care of myself. While Eva is, t is talking you... Oh, while Eva is talking to you, no, while Eva is talking, you see Jerome asking you to come near him with a gesture of his hand. Then you turn away, then you turn again your attention to Eva. Why do you say that? We'll never abandon someone just like that. I'm not a child. I'm not, I'm, I'm uh, more than capable of taking care of myself. Hmm. Yeah, no one can survive alone on his own on the white wasteland. Eva lowers her eyes and waits for a couple of seconds before answering. Fine, but I don't want to be treated like a child. I'm old enough to deserve some respect. Okay, and, and you will have it, I promise you. Now let me talk to my friend over here. He seems to be on the, ed on the edge. Okay, and thank you for being nice to me. I'm tired of people that only see me as a little child. She runs away, she turns away, and goes to sit near the fire. Okay, so Eva... Apparently, uh, is growing up a little bit um, faster than she might have wanted to. You can finally approach your room, who seems eager to talk to you. Now, listen to me and listen carefully. You know how it works with families and new people. We are here with three strangers, but the girl is clearly too young to have any authority on this matter. You, me, and Demetra will just have to pretend. We'll just pretend that you were our leader before that shit happened. The tradition is that um, the tradition is that newcomers accept family leadership, and we can tell them that our leader died some days, the same day the bandits attacked us. We'll treat them as new member of our family, and uh, since there is an actual leader, that Carlos guy won't argue with that, or at least I hope so. Are you okay with that? Okay, that makes total sense. Oh, whoa, whoa, very good on the writers for figuring out a way to. <laughs> To impose me as their leader, uh, uh, the leader of this little band. Okay, so, but yeah, but, okay. I, I guess I know why me because I'm the best qualified to talk with people. Uh, let's see, but maybe I don't know. Wait, wait a minute. Why me? Why did you choose me? Why can't you be the leader? Me? Nah, I'm too old for that, and I don't have the strength to be the leader. You've proven to be a resourceful person. You will do just fine. Just remember to listen to all Jerome's advice, will you? Now let's go talk with the our with our new companions. When everyone is gathered around a fire, Carlo be Carlos begins what uh, will be a long discussion. So, what now? Do you know where we are? Yes, this is the Vale, a relatively enclosed territory not so far from where we got caught. What shall we do now? I suppose we have to choose a new leader, don't we? Oh, wait. Oh. Okay, so what? Wait. Yeah, let's wait for Jerome to say something. Okay. No, it won't be necessary. Jerome stands up, comes near you, and put his hand on your shoulder. This person led us in the past, and you, and we'll do it in the future. Why should he accept that? We're not joining your family. We are about to create a new one. We should discuss it. Well, yeah, let's let. Uh, I, no, maybe. Uh, I should have talked right there. 
We can go back and forth all night about it, but there are three of us and we are not changing our leader. Don't worry, you'll be treated like our brothers. Okay, fine. As long as you will respect our needs, we won't create any problems. Okay, that went better than I expected. So, what shall we do? Our friends are in the hands of some mysterious and incredibly well-equipped fighters who deal with local bandits for reasons unknown. We need to track them and hopefully save them. That will not only allow us to free our friends, but also to discover what those people are and where they get their awesome equipment. Yeah, I guess. They add uh, everything that a survivor needs, and then some. I'm getting old and uh, it would be nice to finally live a decent life. Why, why, why are the violins doing this squeaky noise? I hate it. Put it away! No! I hate it. Oh boy. But their direction is unknown to us. We can't just ask everyone we meet if they have seen some super soldiers passing by. Well, they might uh, be the one be one of those mercenary groups. They're usually rich and well equipped. We might not want to deal with them after all. Actually. At all, actually. We can't imagine the f we can't uh, ignore the fact that their friends were kidnapped either. Yeah, that's right. Um Let's see. Um Hmm. Uh, so I will take a choice right now. I will either go for survival first or for our companions first. I think that in regards to the morale of the group, I'm gonna... Yeah, we need a direction to follow. As the Metro said, we can just travel around and ask people about them. Well, I have a friend not so far from here. He lives in a settlement called Wind Towers out of here. He's a weapon trader, so he will know more about them. He deals with special stuff too, so th so if those mercenary are locals, he might know them. How far is this place? Not more than a couple of days from here, I'm pretty sure of it. People keep talking and you quickly discover that April and Carlos are a good company. Eva is a little more silent, but she seems to know enough about survival to not be a problem for your group. Okay, cool. You will be able to talk privately with your companions using the button on the left top of the map screen. Okay, so do I wanna... Wait, left top? Oh, it's this. What brings you to old Jerome? Um, let's ask about, let's, yeah, let's get to know our companions. Let's do that. Let's do that. Um, so, I'm quite curious about your past. I bet you've seen all kinds of things. Oh, bet one. I traveled a lot before ending up with this family and I've seen a lot of different places and different people. Only the assholes are pretty much the same everywhere, wherever you go. I was born as a nomad, and I will die as a nomad. Every nomad dreams about settling in a safe and hot place, but most of them just keep wandering around until they take their last breath. I abandoned my first family when I was 20 years old. We lost each other during a snowstorm, and I never managed to find them. We so you didn't abandon, abandon them, just you lost them. Hmm. We were traveling in the Great Plains, a dangerous place with scarce landmarks. Luckily for me, well, if you don't know what it means by landmarks, basically, uh, this is this is an easy one, but when you're in a unknown territory, landmarks are basically your map. You don't have a map, you don't have a, a, a compass, maybe, and so you guide yourself by landmarks. And they can be whatever. They can be a big tree, they can be a tower, they can be a mountain, they can be uh, the sun. Um, but I don't think the sun can be of great guidance in, in the frozen wastelands. But uh, maybe, maybe it can. I don't know. But anyway, luckily for me, I found a new family after two months. I kept searching for my parents, but I, I. I would have died alone. Are you still interested in hearing this? I warn you, that was only the beginning. Sure, go on. Sure. Like, uh, I like my new family. They, al they allowed me to take more risks and do more exciting stuff. I finally started to enjoy my dangerous daily routine. I was young and I was able to find happiness in a tranquil life. I was carving some action and my parents uh, always tried to protect me, to keep me away from my kind, uh, from any kind of danger. I discovered what's wrong about an adventurous life just a year later. Our family got attacked by a group of red horsemen. Most of us got killed, the women were enslaved, and I was left for dead on the ground. I was alone again. I barely managed to survive and I learned about the caution uh, about caution in the worst way. I traveled to a near to a nearby settlement and some people were so so kind that they allowed me to stay with them for a while, allowing my wounds to heal. I remember that I was incredibly grateful and surprised. I've never heard of anyone else getting inside a settlement so easy. Are you still with me? Or maybe you want to continue with some other? Sure, go on. Where we were? Oh yes, my um, where were we? Okay, uh, my my um, my short experience as a settlement 
They were really kind, but it was obvious that I couldn't stay for long. The settlement was already too crowded. Among these people, there was Hector, a young, capable boy. The man who was our leader for so many years that I can't really believe his dad. Hector asked me to join him. I was about to leave the settlement with uh, some other people like Goran, but um, he was no expert on our nomad's lifestyle. That's how, my f that's how our family was born, and I'm thankful that I've never seen it fall apart despite all the dangers we lived. We traveled a lot, but the world outside of Vale is dangerous. That's why five years ago we decided to come here. Lots of things changed since the day we became a family. We lost many people, we would, but we also found a lot of new friends. Then, two years ago, we found you, a mysterious guy with amnesia. Well, figures. <laughs> the tale is over. I didn't give you a lot of detail about everything that happened after my meeting with Actor because a lot of things happened, but nothing that you didn't see in those two years. Bandits, beasts, and so on. The only different thing is uh, that in the Vale, those things are not that common. So, you you like the little tale of my life? Uh... Well, I get... Uh, yeah. Yes. Thanks, thanks, Jerome. So, did you... Yeah, okay. So, what about your eye? What happened? Did you hear those stories about people who masturbate too often? <laughs> well, do you have, do we also have hair in, the, in your palms? Apparently, if you play with yourself, a wild bear will appear... <laughs> a wild bear will appear and cut off all of your face. Oh, boy, that's brutal. That's brutal right there. So, if you like to enjoy yourself on all these cold and lonely nights... Play some bear traps on your tent. <laughs> well, yeah, at least you stopped. The bandits didn't come a second time. Or maybe I'm really good at building bear traps. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, we were hunting and a bear decided to smash his claw on my head. I lost an eye, yet uh, I suddenly became more aware of my surroundings. Ironic, isn't it? Yeah. So, what can you tell me about the veil? There isn't much to be told. The Vale is a little territory, mostly surrounded by woods and mountains. That's why it's a safe area. The Vale is a safe place, but there are different reasons behind the safety. First of all, as I already told you, it's quite enclosed and that means less travelers around. But the real secret is that most people in the Vale are poor. I, I traveled a lot and I can assure you that the Wind Tower is a shitty, ridiculous village compared to some tower towns I've seen in the plains. Well, what can you tell me about the contact of the Wind Tower? He's a weapons trader, a good and reliable person. He knows a lot about uh, the ancients and their machinery. Oh, yeah, the ancients, of course. This is a post-apocalyptic world, everyone, so they are referred to us on present time as ancients. Even if he won't be able to put the radio, to buy the radio, we'll have a proper ev evaluation. He's a friend of mine. He used to travel together, but he eventually decided to live in the wind tower after a wolf turned his right leg into a shoe toy. Poor guy. He didn't deserve that shit. So, yeah, now, what do you think about our mission? It's a screwed up situation, we risk throwing ourselves in a suicide mission, but at the same time we can't just abandon our companions. We need to track them, and doing so, uh, we, and doing so we'll have time to gather items and supplies. We need to prepare for dealing with, our, with them. At the end of the day, we're just three. They may, t uh, they may be badass mercenaries, but, uh, but they're human just like you and me. Uh, they are just three, okay, so yeah. Just three? Red? Oh, seriously? Oh, I, oh, yeah. Yeah, there are only three. Oh, right. Yeah, they may be some badass mercenaries, but they're human just like you and me. That's all, and that's needed. And that's all that's needed to kill a human is probably a properly placed bullet. But we need to be able to shoot that bullet. We need weapons, supplies, and probably more people. There's strength in numbers. Well, there is. We're already. How many are we? So it's me and you, mate. And it's. Oh, Irma and uh, her husband are gone, and her children, and there's a little girl, and there's... Uh, so there's two more guys? Hmm, yeah. Let's, uh, yeah, there, let's not waste too much time chatting. No, let's, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, okay, so there's this girl. Uh, what do you need, glorious leader? What do you think of our mission? Our quest will bring us to face an incredible danger, but we can't witness the kidnapping of our family without feeling the urge to strike back. This is our chance to evolve. If we will be able to survive this, we will no more be simple survivors. The predator doesn't expect the prey to hunt him. They don't know we are coming, and they will discover that only when the real fight will begin. Tell me something about you and your past. I can, but I won't be. But it won't be easy for me. I lived as a renegade until Jerome told me I could join them, and it's not pleasant to unearth such parts of my past. 
Well, if you don't want to do it, I won't force you. Don't worry, I can do that. But don't complain if I choose to end the tale another day. One shouldn't dig too much into painful memories. <clears throat> My story begins 24 years ago. I was born as a nomad in a large family. We were many, and the cattle we used to breed fed us every day. I was different from the others and I understood that uh, in my youth thanks to the other children and their I understood that in my youth thanks to the other children and their innocent cruelty. My thoughts and my words were marked as strange and crazy just like they are today. People don't understand the meaning of different people. Uh, or the meaning of different people needed simple world with simple rules. Yeah, I guess. I couldn't be different. As soon as my parents died, I became a renegade, a burden that everyone hated and despised. That's why I left them, searching for different people to talk to walk on my different path. I left them and it was uh, the best decision I've ever made. I traveled two years around the world, I learned how this world works and how people think. Only, to, only the shallows describe the world and its inhabitants using simple words and simple rules. The shallows. <laughs> but uh, you can understand them if you understand their rules, because they're too limited to go beyond those beliefs. I finally found Jerome and Hector four years ago, and that was a joyful day. They accepted me and that's all that matters. I, um, I don't care if they thought I, I was just a crazy girl because I became part of something. And you accepted me too, that's why I don't care if strange is the word you'd use to describe me. I just need to be myself without being mistreated for that. Yep, I, you are a capable woman and without you, I don't know where I would be. I probably owe you my life. You are kind, even if you don't really think that. Well, please, Dimitri, trust my words. You are a valuable member of this family and I wouldn't trade you for anyone. If that's really what you think, I thank you. Maybe I finally found a place for me on this world. Well, I hope you did. Anyway, the tale isn't finished yet, but I will tell you it's ending in the future. Not today, though. I don't like to recall those times, and I already do that too often in my head. Well, I yeah. Um, so let's leave her, and she smiles. Let's go back to our daily walking. So hi, hello to you. Is there something you want to talk about? Yeah. So what about April? So what's the deal between you and April? Marriage, the oldest of all deals. It's a classical story. We found love in the wicked world, and we decided to survive together as a couple until death do us part. Our secret is that she's patient enough to tolerate my personality and I... I guess I, I can make her laugh. laugh. Eh, it's a good thing to make someone laugh when, you're li when uh, your life is nothing more than an eternal struggle with a cruel world, isn't it? Eh, yes, I guess it is. Uh, it makes everything easy to bear. Yeah, it's nice see to see someone who doesn't need to take everything seriously. Anyway, there was something else you wanted to discuss? Yeah, I'd like to know more about your past. It's nothing interesting. You're a survivor too? It's all about hunting, scavenging, and always having cold hands and a nose that begs for mercy. Yeah, nose in the cold. It is a B. I hate cold because of that. I, I also hate hot, hot, warm water because, weather because, uh, yeah, you can. When, when, in, when it gets to a certain degree, you just can't go below naked. And when that is the case, yeah. Cold, you can always get some more layers. But then again, I, I have never witnessed this much amount of cold as we see in Icy. Um, yeah, but two years ago I, I was caught on a snow slide, I lost my entire memory, my entire memory, oh no, my whole SD card, and I don't remember my life before. So the survival life must be um, quite new to you, oh, but I'm pretty sure in those two years you had a chance to rediscover the non-existent pleasures of, li of our life. Anyway, there isn't much to tell, I was born as a survivor, I lived as a survivor, I am a survivor now, and I'm afraid I'll die as a survivor. I left my parents when I was 20. It wasn't my choice, we got attacked by a group of cannibals, Ooh, they killed most of us, including my parents. I traveled with the other survivors for some time, then we met another group and we decided to join them. April was among those strangers. We started getting to know each other, we, we liked each other, in two years we got married. For some time I was happy, really happy, but things aren't going to last on the white wasteland. I consider myself lucky, because despite everything that happened I never lost April. We've been through some rough, rough shit. Long story short, after some time our group decided to split up and life became risky again. Then we traveled with three different families. Every time there were problems that ruined everything. Every time we lost everything, we never lost each other. The last of those three families was attacked by some bandits just a week before we first met. And I think you, and I think you pretty much know the rest. 
End of story. And please, don't ask a detailed version. I prefer some things to stay private. Uh, well, uh, don't worry. I will respect your privacy. Thank you. Maybe in the future, I'll tell you more. Uh, well, is there something else you wanted to discuss? No, I guess not. And I think that's about it for this episode. I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Icy. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, feel free to leave a comment, and I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.